Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and I've been out on a walk today, I'm just in a woodland that I know pretty well and I've travelled here today just to have a look around, it's um, you know coming really to the end of autumn and we're coming into winter now and things are changing and it's always good to get out there and expose yourself to different seasons and in this video I really just wanted to show you a resource that was around at this time of year at a particularly good point in time to pick it and it's crample fungi, Daldinia concentrica now, which is a very interesting fungi that grows predominantly on dying ash trees and there's plenty of ash around me here as you can see lots of dead branches have fallen everywhere and on those branches we have the fungus that we've just mentioned, crample fungi and when you find crample fungi you generally don't just find one or two although you can do um, in certain areas but most of the time in a woodland environment like this you find it in enormous colonies where it would have colonised large areas especially when there's a lot of ash within close proximity. I think there's a bit of confusion on, as to how effective cramp balls are as a tinder and one of the main stories I hear is people picking them, they take them home and then a few days later the fungi spores everywhere and that's because the fungus has been picked too early. You need to let the fungus finish sporing which it will do you know coming into autumn you'll start to see them spore every, everywhere and when they finish sporing they mature into a hard fruit body and at that point they are ready to pick and you can pick them then with no preparations required at all they don't need drying out provided they're not wet and you can just use them straight off the tree and they won't spore because they finish that cycle it being an annual fungus it emerges around about this time of year and it goes all the way through to autumn next year where it will complete its cycle and then turn into a hard crispy shell which can remain on the tree for up to two years and generally insects use them as little homes. But let's have a look at a few and we'll pick one straight off the tree and see if we can get it lit. So here we go, lots of dead fall here. Nothing looks too dangerous above me so I'm not too con you know, uh, concerned about standing here. You can see that we've got lots of branches, really big ones. Another reason why I'm never too comfortable under ash when I'm camping, especially a tree this big and old as well. Um, we've got lots of brackets all over this tree. Some I can see are just ready to use immediately. Uh, this one here, probably not yet. Nice and squidgy, full of moisture. But then the shell was cracked and the moisture has got in. But this one underneath here, you know, this one feels fairly dry. And that one might be pretty good. But we'll have a look at a few different types um, in terms of what stage of their life they're in. We're only going to really see two types at this time of year, which is new fruits that are pretty much brand new and the old ones that have finished maturing. But there are a few just down here that look pretty good. So you can see we have some cramp ball fungus here and we've got this stuff here that looks very hard and almost has a, a powder coating that you can wipe off. It looks almost like a little chocolate that you get in a chocolate box. And it's very, very hard. It's full of moisture. It feels rock hard. You know, if you start banging it, you can see it starts to damage it slightly. But you get the impression it's a very, very hard fungi. And this one here, you know, it's falling apart. It almost feels crispy, like a dry sponge. And so is this one here, or this one's got a lot of damage to the outer shell, so the moisture has got in and has started to destroy the inside of the bracket. And this one here feels a bit tougher. The outer shell is intact. No insects have burrowed in yet much like this one's been burrowed into. You can see a little woodlouse there poking out. He's using it as a bit of a hidey hole. And um, yeah, you can see the differences between the bracket here. So at this stage in their life, they're really easy to tell apart. This is a new fruit that will continue on till next autumn, spore, and then it'll end up like this, which has already been through that process and already spored. And if this one was in a better condition like this one is, this would be ready to use as a tinder. The difficulty occurs when you get part way through next year and this one can look a little bit like that, but it'll still have a bit of brownness to it. And you really want to use the knuckle test as just a, something I've really made up, but it does work and it's when you tap that and feel it like that, it feels and sounds like a dry sponge. When you tap that, and put your fingers over it, it feels rock hard, you know, like a, a hard piece of glue or something. There's just no hollowness to it at all. You can just tell that feels like a dry sponge. So if we pick that, 
and we crack it open, you can see that's actually not in bad condition and I'll just leave that there. Take my ferro rod out, which I'll just pop there. And we'll just see if we can get this one lit. Now, I always prop them up somewhere so they're held in place because they can be a bit tricky, so that will do. And we'll just pop the fire rod here. You can see there we put a few sparks in. It took just about, but due to the damp weather, sometimes they need a little bit more encouragement. So if it doesn't go straight away, just persist with it. And you can see there, that one started to go. You can see that they take a bit of persuasion in damp conditions. But that's no reason not to press on with it. Just blast it a bit more. So it is really important to keep the air on with a cramp ball in its initial stages when it's really damp. In the summer when it's really dry and you've got a fruit body like this that's quite old, you don't need to do this, but got to keep that air on in the beginning or else you can see they dwindle out very quickly if not. So you can see that wasn't too difficult. We just picked that little cramp ball there, put some sparks into him with the ferrocerium rod and it was going quite successfully, provided you kept some good air on for the initial part of igniting the tinder. Because when the weather's very damp like this and the air's damp and you know the, the cramp ball has a bit of dampness in it, you do need to keep that pressure on, especially at this time of year, or else it will go out very fast. I usually walk with them like this and that way it just keeps that air circulation going on them th for a while. And at this time of year when it's damp, if I'm using you know, an ember to blow into flame, like cleavers for example, as my nest, that would be under my jacket drying on my way here. And uh, you know, everything would be, it would take that little bit you know, longer really in weather conditions like this when you're using methods like that. If you're using birch bark and fat wood in damp conditions like this, then those are great tinders to match the weather conditions it's really all just about matching the, the process of making that fire with the kind of environmental conditions you're enduring but we have um, another fallen ash tree here uh, we've even got a Ganoderma bracket on there um, Ganoderma aplanatum growing there that is also useful you know a good ember but it needs a lot of processing unlike the cramp ball loads of cramp balls absolutely loads of cramp balls growing all over this piece of ash and more than one of these is going to be absolutely fine to use as tinder and because all of them have finished sporing and they've finished their cycle I could pull all of these in my backpack and leave them there for ages provided they were dry and they're not going to spore they will rot if you don't dry them so if you're going to pick them and they are dead and you're not picking a live one that will spore you can just put them on your mantelpiece at home or by a fireplace or on a heater or just somewhere warm and they'll dry within a day and they'll be ready to go and you can put them in your tinder bag and uh, yeah, use them as tinder when you're out. But let's have a look at a few more, see if we can get a couple more going and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. As you can see there's an awful lot of cramp balls just down here. Um, we've even got another Ganoderma aplanata growing just there as well. And you can tell that all of these are really mature. And this one here looks pretty good. What I tend to do is just take my knife and uh, scrape the top and just see how dry it is. Just got to obviously watch yourself. You don't put too much pressure because they can be quite hard. You don't want to want to stab yourself. So that one there looks pretty dry. We'll put that one down here. Have a look at a few more. That one's soaked through. Soaked through. 
you, know, you can tell they just explode and they're soaking wet obviously that one there looks pretty good though yeah that one's not bad you can see it's quite hard had a really good intact shell so you can see that one there's in a pretty good state so we've got two just here and they're fairly dry they're gonna there's gonna be some moisture in there we can't really avoid that given the weather conditions um, but they're pretty good we'll see if we can get these going So you can see they had to put quite a bit of air on those because in the beginning stages, as I say, when it's damp, they're, they're really fragile. They're very, very, um, you know, they just go out very easily. So guys, I hope that video helped on using cramp balls. They're a really easy tinder to use. Finding them may be a different story. And when you do, you generally find huge colonies of them. And you can sort of bookmark that area and you'll know that they'll always be there provided they don't come along and take all the ash away and deforest the place. But yeah, I mean, they're a really easy tinder to use. So it's just about picking them in the right stage of their life, that's it. And these fruit bodies we've been playing around with today, you know, the, the dry crispy ones or the ones that are full of water, they'll still hang around on the tree all the way through next year and maybe even the year after if they fare well. And the new fruit bodies you'll see, you just don't want to get those mixed up with them. So just use the tap test and just check if they're brittle and they feel and sound like a hollow sort of hard sponge. If they sound too dense, just leave them alone and move on. And I'm sure you'll find one soon enough. But it's really not about technique, it's just about picking the fungi at the right point in its life, but just something to look out for at this time of year. So I hope that's helped and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you very soon, hopefully, in another video. So take care and have fun.